Uh, now, God can be found in all things except maybe Dunstable. He's omnipresent, which is why the TV schedules are full of religion. Yes, you can find all manner of salvation lurking in the darker recesses of the EPG. Here's a peek at just a bit of it. Think of religious TV, and the chances are you picture something like this. Rows of people standing in a church, la la about just how ruddy great Mr Godford Almighty is. Oh, hang on, I like this bit. <laughs> Woohoo, yeah! <laughs> think of religious TV from overseas, however, and you probably think of something like this. A preacher man bragging about the size of Christ's nuts. Anyway, not all religious TV is this pedestrian. No, some of it looks like this. As a boy, Josh Carpenter never truly understood the importance of God's Word. Until, in his darkest night, he came to realize his deep need for God in his life. Upon accepting Jesus Christ, he began to study his Bible, to memorize Scripture, and to grow stronger in Christ. Until one day, he joined the growing forces of those who take God's Word to heart and courageously follow Jesus. Bible Man is a flabbergasting American Christian superhero show for easily impressed or led kiddiewinks. It chronicles the adventures of a spiritual vigilante wearing an absurd costume, which ought to be standard issue for bishops by the year 2099. Welcome to the Bible Adventure team and a part of the greatest adventure of all time, the adventure of following Jesus. Each week, Bible Man and Co. rush to the assistance of some twee child with an issue, duff up some vaguely satanic bad guys with their Christo cudgels, and deliver a heavy-handed moral lesson to an audience of six-year-olds. I know it's hard, but Satan knows that too. It looks and feels a bit like Batman, really, albeit less sophisticated, marginally more troubling, and with considerably more emphasis on scripture. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Forever and ever, kapow! <laughs> the staggering religious superhero Bible man there, he can only be destroyed by one th reason. <laughs> I mean, in that, in that startling transformation sequence we saw there where we saw how that, that boy became Bible Man, it looked like he'd been staying in his childhood bedroom for 25 <laughs> years. It surely isn't a healthy message to be... Uh, the thing that struck me most about it is quite how badly it was made, to the extent that you think it must be made by anti-Christian people to, to try and make Christianity look as naff and discouraging and artless as possible. <laughs> I want to see him go up against Richard Dawkins. <laughs> yeah. But I'd like to see Richard Dawkins have a rival show where he slips into a tight suit and runs around. He's atheist man. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like flinging fossils at Bible Man. <laughs> oh, explain this dinosaur bone. <laughs> the Bible Man would just melt. From a theological point of view, it's slightly sort of Old Testament, really. Rather, it's not very hippie in Jesus. Actually, it's all quite sort of suppressed and violent. And he's and he and he gets very very angry when he's confronting the uh, yes. villains, which I find very funny. But which children, I think, would find quite scary. Well, it's funny you should say that because we can have a look at that now. Unsurprisingly, Bible Man has a quote from the Bible for all occasions. Here he is, apparently trying to bore criminals to death by reciting chunks of raw scripture at them. Jesus says in Matthew 20, 26, that if someone wants to be truly great, he must serve the rest of us like a servant. Trust the promises of Psalm 146. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord loves those who trust him. We pass the battle. You forget Psalm 135. I don't believe I know that one. Sure you do. You just don't like it. <laughs> that won't fly. Not in the light of Romans 12:17. Ugh, would you stop with the Bible spouting? <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely remarkable. Matthew 11, Luke 5 and John 13. Three people Bible man's no longer allowed within 100 metres of. <laughs> <laughs> I think he seems to know the Bible so inside out, he, could, he probably comes out of the toilet and goes, Corinthians 14. I'd give it 10 minutes if I... <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for anyone who's sort of reading the Bible and watching it at the same time, because they're going to be like, at least give me a spoiler alert. I haven't got to <laughs> Corinthians yet. <laughs> if they're reading the Bible at the same time as watching that, they're probably thinking, where does the bloke with the... Yeah. Where's the purple man? <laughs> <laughs> where's the magic purple man? 
<laughs> now, Bible man might seem ridiculous, but Christianity doesn't have a monopoly on oddness. Angels is a multi-faith debate show which recently launched on Sky Real Lives. In it, people who think they've encountered angels share their stories, and an audience of totally neutral psychics, angel experts and one token sceptic debate their plausibility. Here's a typically credulous reconstruction of a reported angelic encounter. I'd always been a very sickly child. I was very weak, uh, I was anemic, I couldn't run around. I coughed all the time and I coughed blood up. My mum was a nurse, but very unconventional, and she didn't believe in hospitals. I remember going back up to bed, obviously gone to sleep, and um, I woke up. The unusual thing was, I didn't wake up coughing. And there, at the bottom of the bed, was this person. He was so beautiful. His face was stunning. He didn't smile, but he just had this wonderful shine on his face, and I could see through him. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it the next morning when I woke up and the doctor came to take me to hospital. And he said, I can't believe this. You know, you, you were right to keep her back. She's fine. From that day on, I was always at school. So who was the mysterious stranger she saw that night? Imagination or visitation? <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. I think I know this one. Imagination. <laughs> uh, what did you make of that? It made me quite angry, really, because it's supposedly a, a discussion programme and they're bothering, they're paying lip service to... that They have this one person on who's an expert who says, well, there's no such thing as angels, obviously. There's no such thing as angels. It wasn't an angel. You were ill, so you hallucinated that, and then, <laughs> and then you got better. Feverish child imagines person gets better. That's what happened there. <laughs> then you go, well, now we've addressed that side of the debate and now let's talk to the nine people who believe in angels. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 9-1, so, yes, angels win. It's actually getting to a dangerous point once you've got a pro Program on television where people are going, yeah, so he, he thinks it's not an angel. Anyway, was it an archangel or was it a visiting angel? Yeah. Or was it. Mm. I mean, yeah, they had an expert on saying, we actually think this was a guardian. So you think it was a guardian angel rather than a guiding angel? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, there are types of angels. Yeah, but yeah, come on. Yes. Fucking up, not even Bible Man <laughs> would say there are this number of types of angels. <laughs> Where's the bit in even the Bible where there are the nine different types of angel <laughs> listening? <laughs> Plumbing angel. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, here's a question which pertains to angels um, and evidence for them. Uh, another woman who appeared on the show explained that she believes an angel saved her daughter from dying in a car crash. What sign do you think she saw that led her to believe this? It's like an angel left a little calling card. Was there a mysterious little bit of wee on the carpet? <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. What might an angel, a winged angel, have? A feather. Yes, you're absolutely right, it was a feather. Let's take a look. I opened the front door and her car, which was not the car she'd been driving in, her car was on my driveway with the biggest white feather on the passenger side of the windscreen. I totally believe that there was somebody looking after her that night. Amazing. I take it all back, as it looks pretty cast iron to me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that bit. I haven't seen that bit. Why does she take it um, as... Uh, you, you go out and you see a feather. Why take it as uh, evidence that an angel is looking over you? Why not take it as a warning from the king of the seagulls? <laughs> 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 Nearly got you. Yeah. Um, I've got a quick question here about another religious show. Uh, take a look at these friendly-looking men. Uh, they are Ray and Kirk, who appear on the American evangelical show The Way of the Master. Uh, they look normal enough, but what evidence do they use to prove God's existence? Is it the invention of the green screen? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's edible. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too good. It's too um, good. By accident. Yeah, yeah. Not only can you eat it, it shits another sort of food. Yeah, come on! <laughs> it crosses the road not, and not gives the... strictly us... shit. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's a piece of fruit. Uh, the apple? Nope. The orange? Nope. <laughs> banana? Uh, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, they claim the humble banana proves that God exists. Well done, David. Point to you. <laughs> now, let's enjoy, let's enjoy their rigorously scientific argument for the existence of God. Behold, the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side, there are three ridges. On the close side, two ridges. 
If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side there are three grooves, on the close side two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find, as with the soda can makers, they placed a tab at the top, so God has placed a tab at the top. When you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. You'll find the wrapper, which is biodegradable, has perforations. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. Notice it has a point at the top for ease of entry. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. It's chewy, easy to digest. And it's even curved toward the face to make the whole process so much easier. Seriously, Kurt, the whole of creation testifies to the genius of God's creative heart. Watertight. Absolutely watertight. Uh, incredible. It's, it's almost as if the banana was intelligently designed to be eaten by the monkey he thinks we didn't evolve from. I'd like to see him do exactly the same thing with a, uh, with a mini baby bell. <laughs> this is irrefutable evidence for the existence of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the most convincing argument they're setting forth. Well, it's fine in Aishan, but then you just think about all the organisms that are just disgusting and horrible and only survive by burrowing into people's eyes or, or you know, yeah. only survive by making us die of swine flu mm. or all these things. You go, well, well thanks very much, God. So, <laughs> you know, we've got the banana on one hand and then horrible buboes and, and <laughs> sort of... Rictuses of pain yeah. before death it, on the other. It kind of, it kind of proves. It kind of I mean, proves I think the... it shows he's, he's got a dark side. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it proves basically what they're trying to prove there is that God is a psychotic bastard. Yeah. And uh, when I say God is a psychotic bastard, I want to make it clear. Uh, I mean all gods except Allah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, intelligent design is fine, isn't it? It's just it, it shouldn't be described as being a scientific theory. The thing about saying I can suck a banana and I really like it and. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't That's count not that as an, I wouldn't count that I want to hear. Strictly, <laughs> it fits really nicely in my hands. Yeah. And my, I mean, if I do this with my mouth. <laughs> That's what it I wouldn't done. call that an experiment, strictly. <laughs> How the man's um, heart tickles the back of my throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God wants yeah. me to do it. I don't want to. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you could go, look how this school bus fits perfectly down the ravine. God <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think we've cleared up religion. <laughs>